My name is Jerry Slazak, and I'm the Director of IT Support Services. Previous to my current position, I was the Director of uh, Instructional Technology, so DTLT, and uh, our CIO at that time was Chip German, and he was proposed a building to the state that was taking lots of different components as far as a data center, but also bringing together student services like DTLT or the Writing Center, Speaking Center, all these different kind of things and converging them in one space. Um, it was a unique building in that there weren't others like that out there as examples on uh, on university, at, di at different universities. So. Um, when I found out about this building, one of the things I always enjoyed uh, as far as instructional technology has been physical design of spaces and learning spaces um, and how the space can interact and how it can make a big difference in how, uh, you know, teaching and learning can happen um, in different kinds of environments. So um, he, uh, I beg, basically begged Chip, can I please be on? the building committee and be part of this project and he agreed and he thought it would be good for us to be involved in that as far as um, uh, instructional technology was concerned. We had our initial meetings and as part of that um, I ended up being on the committee that was going to do the evaluation of the architectural firms because the you know the institution puts this out for bid say we need an inst the I guess what the state gave us money at the beginning was just to do design mm -hmm. and then once we had that complete they would come back at some point and have uh, funds for building so I was involved in that piece at the at the beginning doing the even the selection of the architectural firm which ended up being Hanbury Evans um, and then working with the committee through that point to the initial design parts about who should be in the building, what kind of components, how much space for each of these things, what's the structure look like, where should it go. That second and third floor are really flexible with the way um, the infrastructure is there. So that's that raised floor, um, power, network, things like that can be put where we want it. Um, walls can go up, like even the the rooms that are along the back side there, the, the conference rooms and the little collaboration rooms that are glassed off, that's all called demountable partitions. All those walls can come down. Will it age? Well, it's, it, that's dependent on a couple of things, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have an infrastructure that allows that, and I think that that's been designed into this building. Um, but it's not simple to take down walls and move things around right. like that. So it would be it would be a project. It would probably mean you know part of the building or parts of the building would need to be closed, or mm -hmm. it would happen over a summer, or you know something like that. Um, but it's not like. I, I don't believe it's something that would say you need to take a year to close. No, I don't think it's, you know, if you had it all planned and the way that this infrastructure designed and you say, okay, we're just going to come in here this week, we're going to take all these walls out, and then we're going to spend the next month putting them back up, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do this here, and this here, and this here. Yeah, I think that, that the building does have the opportunity to uh, change with, with what we need it to be in the future. There's lots of rules that you have to follow um, in the state of Virginia whenever you're doing a building or really when you're procuring things, when you're buying things with tax dollars. So we had this structure where we had create, to create first create an RFP, which is a request for proposals that would say, okay, here's here firms, here's a building that we want to build, and here's the general idea of what we want to have, and here's a general idea of how many how many square feet, and here's a general idea of what the budget would be and what we hope to accomplish and and the time frame and all those kinds of things. So you 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 build this RFP that describes those things and you would put it out on the street, right? So firms can see this proposal and reply to it. So um, we put the RFP out. So that was one of the first things the committee had to do is write the RFP, mm -hmm. working with our purchasing group, working with our capital outlay group here at Mary Washington. Um, put that out on the street and then we got, I wish I had done more research before the interview because I can't remember <laughs> how many, but it was over, I think it was close to 20 um, or oh, so wow. uh, different proposals from different firms wow, that came okay. in. So um, as part of that process, 
we had to have a way to score them. So we came up with a rubric where we're looking for these certain kinds of things. Did we think they were in there? To try and narrow us down to, to three or four firms, those firms came in and gave a presentation to uh, the full committee of the group. And we all sat there and talked about it, looked at the work they had done. And then from there, we chose Hanbury Evans. I think that those first two floors when you yeah. come in um, and the tunnel, you're right on campus walk, but you're passing through the building. And yeah. as you pass through the building, it's not like you're looking in windows. It's No, it's like you're in the yeah. building, right? The cafe is on one side and the convergence center is on the other side. And you can see the activity and you can see what people are doing. Um, I really like that wall there because it's also uh, – kind of a see and be seen place for students. Mm -hmm. You can decide if you want to sit right there by the right. window and see what's going on and do your work there, you can, but then there's also different parts of the building mm -hmm. that more match however you feel you want to study or the kind of environment you want to be in. As a student, you can come in here and find the place that's comfortable for mm -hmm. you, right? It wasn't all going to be the same. It wasn't all going to be noisy. It wasn't all going to be quiet. The other distinctive feature uh, that I, I like is that little convergence garden outside, too. It has a little amphitheater there. We haven't done much yet with, like, having events there, but it could support them. Mm -hmm. There's power there. There's different things that can go outside there. So um, I've seen classes taught out there, and people roll out the rolling whiteboards to that spot and have class out there. Um, but yeah, so that second and third floor, and then I like the video wall too, and that, you know, there was there were tons of discussions about that video wall as far as what should that be, and a lot of people, well, it should be a big digital sign, and like we were like, no, it really should not be a digital sign. We have digital signs everywhere else that announce things, so we've really got to the point where that should feature student or community generated digital pieces, right? So the things you're usually seeing on that wall are, are student-created art or student-created video or different kinds of projects that are, are being worked on in different classes. So mm -hmm. um, I, I really like you walk in there and it's just that big open space. Um, it feels really kind of different. It feels kind of comfortable while also feeling modern. And, um, and it's also like you come out you're coming through in this Georgian building that looks kind of, you know, 50 to 100 yeah. years old, right? But you're coming into this space that's really modern and interesting. Well, that we're here. Yeah. And, and, and that, that's just like anything, right? Um, uh, we, we are here to, to help anytime students have any kinds of questions or problems with any kind of technology. We're always a good place to start. Um, we don't always fix everything or have ownership over everything that people might bring a question to us about, but we will certainly work to try and find who that person is, connect you with that person, um, or those kinds of things that, you know, to try and help everybody get the things that they need. Mm -hmm. And and we do that with anyone that's here, not just students, right? It's just faculty, it's staff, anybody that comes, parents that come to the help desk or people that are visiting on campus and having trouble getting on guest wireless, any of those kinds of things. I'm really, you know, pleased on how it's turned out. Um, I think a lot of time, you know, it, at least when the building was opening, I was spending a whole lot of time focusing on all the problems, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what I was here to fix, right? right. And that's the thing that, that was my piece of the, of the project too, is to try and resolve those issues. And sometimes it makes you forget that, you know, most of it's good, yeah. and a lot of it was, you know, you know, the students were very happy when the building opened, and um, it's interesting to watch the life of life cycle of the building every day. How it, you know, it starts in the morning and it's pretty quiet, and as the day gets going, you see a lot of staff and faculty around, and then the students start showing up around noon, and then it's very busy the rest of the day, mm -hmm. and then the evening comes, and the students all kind of take the place over. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's really what we were hoping it would be because it was when we did the design, there wasn't a 24 7 place on campus other than the dome room. And I don't know if you know, if you've ever studied in the dome room, that was the like the lobby of Seekebeck. Mm -hmm. That was the 24 7 place. Not much 
right? Picnic table right. kind of things yeah. there, right? Not, not much there that was very interesting or that I would say I would be going out of my way to, you know, try and, and, and go to a place like that. And mm -hmm. plus, you know, the collaborative spaces that we built, the ability for everybody to reserve them if you want to, um, the ability to just go in them if there's nobody that has a reservation, that, that a lot of these spaces are just open and available to you 24-7 as a student. Um, it, it, it's really did change a lot of things for us, right? So um, it gave students, faculty, staff, places to check out equipment that they didn't have before. For us to kind of realize this um, digital, digital literacy potential that we had and we wanted and we had initiatives around. And that is important for, you know, students in, 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 the, in the future, that you need to know how these things happen and how these things go together. And that we needed to have spaces that could support that. So, you know, in that way, I think that the building has been a success.